Good morning, you handsome lot. Well, it is Thursday yet again, and behind me I have got a 2017 Dacia Sandero 1.5 DCI. And this vehicle today is in for a timing belt replacement. Thank God there's not a wet belt replacement. I deserve a little bit of a break, but yeah, we're going to be cracking on with this. Now, before we go getting involved in this vehicle and this job, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a full health check on the vehicle and make sure that we've got no end faults stored in the engine control module, which we haven't, but the customer has requested a diagnostic report, so I'm going to print this off now. For those that want to know what diagnostic machine I'm using, it is a Lawn Duro Tab 3. Absolute, unreal machine. Right, well first things first, we're going to disconnect the battery negative first. Take the cap off the header tank, and then we can take a vehicle up and make a little bit of room for ourselves. We've got to take a wheel off, the driver's side wheel arch, and also the belly pan. Right, well with that vehicle up in there, we've removed the driver's side front wheel, the belly pan, and also the little splash guard here protecting the crank pulley. Now there is also a little bar with an 18 and a 13. You just remove, you don't have to. You could probably squeeze past it, but like I like to say all the time, more room the better. Right, well I've gone ahead and removed the coolant now into my nice little receptacle and the hose clip has actually snapped and I'm glad I have taken it off and found it because that could have failed and the hose may have popped off on the customer and caused all sorts of problems but we have put a new clip back on for him. Right now while it's also been up in the air we've gone ahead and got a 16mm on the tensioner for the alternator belt and removed it. Right let's drop the car back down. Right, well now I've got the vehicle back down at working height, we need to go ahead, well I've already gone ahead and removed the engine mount. How I did it? With a block of wood and a jack underneath the sump. Always be careful because you don't want it cracking or denting them sumps. Now, to get the engine mount out, it would have been easier if I removed that air conditioning pipe, but it can come out. With a little bit of a fiddle, you've got to drop the engine right down as far as it'll go. And just move these fuel lines out of the way and you can just squeeze it out which is right by there I will put that to one side now and we'll get the upper timing cover off now to remove the timing cover what I've done um, there is a little black prested just in the cover there now you have to prise that out be careful with it because it can pop off and they can go in the chassis leg or anywhere and then the timing cover itself is actually fairly simple to remove there is some little wing clips and you can just pull it out there is a little bit of a fiddle where you've got to jiggle it and piggle it and god knows what but yeah that is now out. Right, with everything now out of the way, even that second part of the engine mount, which is held on with some 10 mils, we do need to get this engine timed up. And it's gonna be easier for me to show you on a diagram. There's a timing pin, which goes in the camshaft pulley, by there, which is gonna be used in this kit. And it is absolutely brilliant. I've had this 10 odd years, it's brilliant. Everything I need for like a French engine kind of thing. And also, there's a crank locking pin which goes just underneath the starter motor and locks up against the crank which I have already put in you're not going to be able to see it I don't think let me get my little torture rooney for you which is I don't know if you can see it right by there just next to that intake pipe by there what I'm going to do is turn the engine over now and get that locked up first. Now with that uh, crank locking pin in place, we can jump on at 18 mil now on a long extension. And the crank pulley itself, we can get it locked up. You just turn it over now, you should see, or hear, the engine. And that now is perfect. So we can go ahead, flip it round, grab our camshaft tool, and that should slide in to the cylinder head. It's not. It's probably because that belt has stretched a little bit. We're going to have to do a little bit of fettling to get that in. Right now all I'm going to do is grab an 18mm spanner. As you can see that pin isn't going in. We're just going to turn it ever so slightly and that now is locked in perfectly. Right well now everything is locked off what we've done. Uh, we've put our own little mark on the fuel pump there the red line, a little bit of marker pen, it's not going to hurt a little bit of reference, we like reference now undo the three 8 mils on the camshaft pulley because that is a free floating pulley and we can take the car up now if all goes to plan we should be able to just let this engine down and that is going to rest 
on the subframe so we can take this vehicle up in the air. Now we've removed the jack. All right, well, as you can see, the vehicle is now fully raised and we need to remove this crankshaft bolt. How are we going to do it? Get a Milwaukee on it, put it on full power and give it a good. And there we go. That is one crank pulley off. With that crankshaft pulley now removed, we can go ahead and get on that 13 mil on a tensioner. Can we camera stick there? Oh, let's have a look, see if we can do it. Can we take? No, my camera's, yeah, is, is it? No, I'm gonna have to put my camera somewhere else. We're gonna get on that 13 mil now and get that tensioner off. Right, now you might be able to see it, I don't know. You might see a bit of an arm piss, but never mind. We've got our 13 mil now, we get on this tensioner. Get our finger out. Move a little tension around in that belt. Should. Things like this. You also know, because I'm on camera, this belt won't come off. Right, let's just take the tensioner off. It's all about the gurn. Who else has got a working gurn? Come on. There you go, that's a tensioner off. Now this belt should. Sure. Fall off, just like that. <laughs> right, well that really wasn't magic, but never mind. Um, we now need to move round, remove these three eight mils, and remove this plastic cover to reveal, zoom Rooney, the water pump. Right, now that plastic cover is removed and somewhere safe, it's not getting stood on. We can go ahead now and remove this water pump. Now that eight mil by there that I've removed, that goes straight into a water jacket on the block. So get yourself a nice little receptacle, catch all that water. We can get the rest of the eight mils out. Right, well now we've removed all them eight mils, we can go ahead and remove that water pump gasket. But however, I've had a little bit of an accident myself and I'm gonna stitch this into it now, literally stitch it into it. As I put my little screwdriver up there to pick the cover, the gasket off the block, that bit there has sprung out without me knowing. And as I put my hand down, the gasket's gone straight through my hand. We're still stitching to it now. Well, this is not where I wanted to be. My hand, it doesn't look much, but however, the little metal gasket has gone pretty much straight through my hand. Now, I need a stitch in it, which you're gonna do now. But yeah. Oh well. The show does not stop. As you can see, it is a little bit grim, and it is fairly deep. Ugh, man. Now I have done many of these water pumps and timing belts on these 1.5s over the years and I've, all, I've always been careful but it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how careful you are, that accidents can happen. But we've got a little plaster over that stitch now, we're going to pull the glove down and we're going to crack back on. So let's get back around to removing this gasket off the block, please be careful with it, you would end up in hospital like me, accidents do happen. Um, it is a perforated edge on it, so you need to keep wiggling it back and two until they snap off. Right, let's get that block now cleaned up. Right, well with that block now all cleaned up and it does look like brand new, let's get this uh, water pump back on. Now, all these gaskets, you see so many people using silicon, you don't need to, it can void your warranty and stuff like that. Just use the gasket. Right, let's get this on and torque it up. Now with all them torqued up now to 10 Nm, that one there, going into the water jacket, you need to get yourself some liquid PTFE, I've had this years. Look at PTFE and put it on the bolt because you don't want that leaking. Right, well I've now plotted on, we've put all the covers back on, everything's nice and torqued up the water pump. Now a new tension has been put on and we've put the timing belt on, we've started at the crankshaft pulley, routed it past the water pump, over the fuel pump, down to the camshaft and then back down to the uh, tensioner. 
Now, these pulleys, they are free floating. So when you put, especially the camshaft, only the camshaft's free floating. Now when you put the tension on this belt, these pulleys are gonna turn and you might see my fat hands might get in the way. But there's a little pointer down there that's got a line up. Can I zoom in? It's got a line up. So as I'm putting tension on it, that'll line up and then I can get that tensioner bolt torqued up to. What is it? Where is it? Where is it? 27 newton meters. So I'm gonna have a little go now, we're trying to do it for you lot to be able to see. You might see these pulleys moving, you might not. That now is bang on. Keep that tension on the tensioner. Come on. And that now, that tensioner is bang on. Before we tighten that camshaft up, what we're gonna do is just put the crankshaft fully on by hand. And we're gonna make sure the crank is still on its lock. That there is absolutely bang on. Now once we're happy with the tension on the belt, we can go ahead now and we can get that camshaft pulley torque back up to 14 newton meters. It doesn't sound a lot, considering the job that it's got to do, but it's more than enough. Now on these um, crank bolts, I do need to torque it up to 120 newton meters and then 90 degrees. Now I've already talked it up and how I've done this and how I'm going to keep on doing it is leaving that pin in the crank it's not going to bend it it's not going to cause any problems that was talking the end of these crank bolts up over the years so yeah let's drop it down now and put the rest of these covers back on right well we've got all them covers back on now and the engine is bolted back to the chassis we're going to go ahead and refill the coolant system because you've had all the coolant out of it now what i'm going to be using it is a coolant vacuum and refill if you haven't got one of these and you haven't used one you need to buy one they're not much i think they're about 80 90 quid off amazon now what it does it pulls all the air out of the system you leave it for about five minutes make sure that you've got no leaks and then we can get a coolant and refill that system and it won't have any air in it brilliant game changer game changer all right so i'm just going to unclip these fuel lines now because I've cable tied them out of the way and clip them back in to the proper place right now when refilling it make sure that you've got your correct coolant for the vehicle now it's just as simple as this filling it up flick that switch and then that now will pull all that coolant in straight in to the system brilliant and while that's doing that I could be doing something else Right now all that coolant now is all topped up and I am more than happy with it. Um, everything's connected, the battery's connected. What we're going to do now is flip the camera around. Every time I start talking he has to do a tyre. But anyway, let's get on the key. There we go. It's like brand new. Right, well, while that car now is ticking over like a little singer sewing machine, what we're going to do is put the splash guard wheel and the under trays back on. While it's getting up to temperature, I'm going to wait for the fans and then we're going to do a little bit of a, a diagnostic check and make sure that everything is running perfectly. And I also want to check for the customer as well with the upstream pressure sensor pipe isn't blocked but yeah that's what i'm gonna do right well we're now back on the floor the car's been ticking over for about five ten minutes or so let's get in it have a little look 
at some live data and see what's going on here. Now I have already set it up. Uh, what we're looking at is the engine speed, uh, the water temperature, 56.4 degrees, and also the pressure of the upstream. Now, the reason why I like to change uh, check these is because they can be blocked, but still give no fault code, and the customer wanted it diagnosed in. So we'll have a little look at it, see if there's anything underlying. Well, if this isn't blocked, these cars are absolutely brilliant. Um, now what the engine speed and the pressure of the upstream turbo is meant to do is rise and fall pretty much mirror each other. If we rev it, you should see it rise and fall. Hang on, let me combine it. Let me combine it so you can see what's going on. The orange and the blue line is what we're looking at. And it should pretty much replicate it. As we rev it, the blue line is the engine RPM. And we want the orange one to replicate it. Now if they're blocked, what normally happens is the orange one will take its time to fall back down and that is how you know they're blocked. But no, we are happy now. We jump back, we've got no fault codes, the car's ticking all like a little single sewing machine. Anyway, I am more than happy now with this car and what I've done with it. Bearing in mind we had a little bit of an upseat and we went to A&A, &A. but we got patched up and we got the job done. Everybody's happy accidents happen like I have done no end of these and I am the first to say to be careful with that gasket now I'm gonna have to have a little recap on what happened as you can see that little bit there that's sticking out like a shark swim that is what got embedded into my hand nonetheless no harm done a little bit of a stitch a little bit of a war wound but the car is done so yeah on with the next i don't know what i got coming in probably another wet belt or something on me but yeah anyway hope you enjoyed it let's get it done <laughs> 